Hi everyone and welcome along to another episode of This Racing Life and as the flat season draws to a close this week we're looking ahead to the jump season proper. Later on we'll be reflecting on what was a fairy tale season for both Emma Lavelle and Aidan Coleman. But first I'm in Warwickshire where Ollie Murphy is amassing an army of talent as he tries to build on a hugely successful 2018-19 campaign. Ollie, as we, as we tick round to what is the jump season proper, how, how stimulating is this time of year for you? Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, so they all look like champions at the moment, um, but we're uh, I suppose this time of year now we're desperate for a bit of rain and uh, yeah, really looking forward to the middle of October. You've, you've had plenty of runners and winners earlier on in the summer, but is it, is it almost a bit like the quiet before the storm now? Yeah, I suppose it is. Um, a lot of my horses won now in the, in the early months of the, of the summer season, so uh, the last month or six weeks has, has been quiet, but that was expected. Um, so yeah, I have, a, I have a lovely bunch of horses now for the, for the winter. It, uh, it makes you get out of bed that five minutes earlier than you, uh, than you usually would, and yeah, we're really looking forward to it. I'm fascinated to know because it's, we are talking just a matter of a few years now as a trainer. It, it, it seems like you've been around a lot longer and the success would be testament to that. But in, in terms of numbers year by year, how much have you grown now? I suppose we started out with half a dozen and uh, to the present day, I suppose we're going to have 120 in for the, for the winter season. So uh, we've got a lovely bunch of young horses. Um, I've been very, very well supported by some, some very big and well-known owners. Um, which I'm obviously very grateful for, but it's a big testament to everyone behind me and the hard work that's gone on behind the scenes that we've, we've all grown together and we're a, we're a young, enthusiastic bunch and, and hopefully this is just the start of everything. Well, it's a fantastic team behind you and, and it's, it's been great to see as, as well this morning that your parents, neither of them are too far away in this situation, are they? Yeah, no, we all work together. They, uh, they tend to leave me at it. Um, Mum's there for advice, um, as all mums are, and uh, Dad's obviously got the... The, 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 all the experience kind of from the from the bloodstock side of things um, so he's he's got a big input into into buying and selling what we're uh, what, what, what's coming through Warren Chase so it's John it's a, it's a great shoulder to John to rest on. You had some young horses who ran with real distinction and excelled themselves at the biggest meetings of the lot last season and um, as we tick round to the to as I keep saying the jump season proper what's the sort of step-by-step -step process whereby you bring them back how do you bring them back what do you do with them? So I suppose just treat every horse the same. I'm not someone who would prioritise a, a, a good horse to a bad horse. Um, they'll all do 12 weeks of, of, of cantering before they see a racetrack and I'm, I'm very keen to get plenty of schooling into them and, uh, and all that jazz. But uh, yeah, I suppose we'll get, get, get day one out of the way first. We'll, we'll, we'll go somewhere small and, and, and hopefully get one next to their name and a bit of confidence and then listen, hopefully go on to Cheltenham in the likes of November and, and hopefully tackle them big graded races from there on in. This year around, we'll talk about specific and individual horses later, but given the way they ran, the expectation is there that some of the horses, particularly the novice chasers, are going to be running in, hopefully Touchwood, the, the top novice chasers. Is, has it been exciting and is it exciting? Sort of obviously we're at the very beginning, but hopefully mapping out what would be their campaigns. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I was obviously lucky enough to be in Gordon's for, for such a long time, yeah. working with high profile horses. And it's lovely being able to have my name on the top of the door now, working with with equally as nicer horses, um, as I said, I've had fantastic uh, support from f from owners to allow me getting these nice horses, and hopefully we're going to repay these people back and and have plenty of fun along the way, but hopefully win as well. Those first two days at the Cheltenham Festival, with the horses second and third and supreme, and also brewing up a storm, running so well the next day on the Wednesday. Um, in terms of personal satisfaction, how much did that give you? Yeah, I was pleased. Um, I was pleased. I, I, I'm a winner. I was yeah. disappointed as well. Um, I was proud of the horses, but I was disappointed not to be one place further up in the winner's enclosure on the first day of, uh, of a Cheltenham festival. But I think we might have bumped into a freak in the, in the Supreme. Yeah. Um, I think Thomas Darby's very good. I, I, I've never hid behind that. Um, Itchy Feet's a massive improver and they're two very, very exciting horses to look forward to this season. Ollie doesn't just have the experience with Gordon Elliott to his advantage, but also a strong grounding from his parents, former trainer Annabelle and bloodstock agent Aidan. I mean, is, it, is it fair to say that 
you feel like you're on a bit of a journey here with everything that's going on through your son Ollie and his achievements so far, but, but we're still almost at the very beginning of everything. Yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress, Nick. Um, we're into the third year now. Lots of nice horses coming through. Um, it's been, this, this year, a lot of them won't reach their potential, but it's a, a four or five year project, it always was. Um, and it's looking good at the moment. Big, big thrill seeing it come together the way it has. Um, a lot of hard work. A lot of, a lot of work has gone into it over the last two years, and there's an awful lot of work still to go into it. It's far from finished. Again, from, from the team and from the, the family's perspective, to go back to the first two days in particular of the Cheltenham Festival back in March, to see in the first race Ollie's two runners finishing second and third in there, mm -hmm. and then obviously brewing up a storm a day later, running a huge race mm -hmm. um, in the other grade one for the novices on the Wednesday. Just how much pleasure did that give you? Huge. To say that, that he was at least he was um, competing at that level. Yeah. And horses, it's okay training winners around the tracks and, and what handicap is and whatever, but it's, it was huge confidence builder as well for Oliver to be able to go there, compete at that level, and, and with very few horses ready to, to compete at that level and, and be competitive. I suppose to grow up in and around horses and, and have you as his father and, and of course his mother Annabelle, but uh, to, to, to sort of emphasise just how important that era was when Ollie was with Gordon Elliott, did, did he come back sort of driven more determined than ever and, and sort of handpicking the best of, best of the experience with Gordon to be able to bring back here? Yeah, Gor Gordon gave him a huge education. He was, he was very, very good to him when he was yeah. over there, took him under his wing, gave him lots of experience with outside of training, with dealing with people, syndicates, travelling, whatever. Um, and he's come back to here. He came back with a very set view as to what he wanted to do. He wasn't from day one. He wasn't guessing at what he was doing. He had his plan, and he's he stuck. He's he's stuck by it since. Um, his training methods, his staff methods, his staff management, and whatever. And he that he's learned all that at, at Gordon's really. More from Ollie Murphy on his team for the season a little bit later. Well, undoubtedly one of the brightest stars of the last jump season who took his connections and racing fans alike along a wonderful journey which culminated in success at the Cheltenham Festival was Paisley Park. And Christina McKelleny has been down to Bonita Racing Stables in Wiltshire to reflect on that monumental campaign with Paisley Park's trainer, Emma Lavelle. Paisley Park has moved on by two lengths with Aidan Coleman. He's won all his races this season. Now he's won the Sun Racing Stairs Hurdle. Emma, last season, Paisley Park and the journey you went on with him was very much the story of the season. How do you feel now, looking back at all that experience? Um, look, it, was, it was a magical year with him, it really was. And, um, you know, we knew he was a lovely horse. Uh, did we anticipate that the journey was going to be quite as exciting as it was? No, you know, there's no way that we could have dreamt it. Um, but... Um, but looking back, you know, we're very, very lucky to have him. He's the sort, he is the, the sort of horse of a lifetime, and um, and just so exciting now that that the next season is in front of us. So we never thought that he was a um, that, that he was a slow horse, if you like. Um, but what he's able to do is relax through his races. Uh, he finds that cruising gear that takes that takes nothing out of him through the race, um, and then has that mindset. That you um, that he only quickens when when you ask him to quicken, so um, which is absolutely ideal for these staying um, these staying horses that he doesn't waste energy through the race he just gets into that cruising um, gear and off he goes, and um, I think uh, you know he'd always shown us you know he'd always shown us plenty of course you're never going to know that he's at home that he's going to do absolutely what he does on the track, um, but he always showed us plenty of natural ability and that he was that he was likely to be able to to stay that distance and 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 you know finish up hopefully as a as a nice horse mm -hmm. as nice as he transpired to be maybe not but you know <laughs> look that was the added bonus how was the first grade one um it was oh look it was fantastic and and i think the thing the thing for us is that We'd, we'd had plenty of, of graded winners mm. um, and plenty of, of graded place, grade one placed horses. Um, but you kind of feel your, your CV definitely isn't full if you haven't got that grade one victory there. And, and so it was a really big day. It was a really big day for us. And, um, and to have um, 
to have done it the way that he did, uh, it, was, it was just a massive fillip for the yard and just a real big confidence giver to all of us that we were, we were just as capable as anyone to, to produce that horse on the day, um, cherry ripe to go and do the job. I think off the back of seeing you and Aidan win your first grade one with a horse, that was when the, the public perception of, and particularly Andrew's incredible enthusiasm and, and how much this horse clearly means to him, that's when the public really started to buy into the progression you were making with him. Mm. And to do what he did on trials day, and suddenly everyone's thinking, stay as hurdle, obvious progression from here. And that's when people really started to follow the story. How did that feel, all that public, was, it, was there any pressure with it at all? Um, I think probably at that stage, the greatest pressure for me was the fact that Andrew by this stage had given away his tickets for the, um, uh, Australian Open tennis final to someone else and not <laughs> oh, gone to Australia <laughs> and I was thinking oh my goodness me let's just get there and, and make sure it's fine so I think that was the biggest pressure. You know, our view was that this is the trial for the stayers so you know so long as he he runs well and shows us that he's in good order um, of course we wanted to win it but I think we hadn't put as much pressure on ourselves of thinking gosh if he doesn't win this it's a disaster um, it was more just a case of sussing out Cheltenham and seeing, you know, whether whether it was Cheltenham that he didn't like or just the fact that the season before he wasn't ready for it. And how was that build up between January and the festival? It was really special for us, actually. It was, yes, there was a huge amount of media attention. And actually, to be honest, I think Paisley barely left his box without someone filming <laughs> him or someone being in to write something or take pictures. But. But I just think that was, it was lovely. It was lovely mm. because, because people cared. So many people cared about it. And um, yeah, a lovely story was Andrew had gone over to Ireland um, a couple of weeks before the, um, before the stayers hurdle. And um, he'd got, uh, he was flying back home again. And at the airport, he gave his passport and ticket to the guy um, at the desk, checking him onto the plane. And they held the passport for a moment, and Andrew was kind of like, "Oh my God, what's going to, what's happening on the back of this?" And um, and the 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 guy that was was checking people onto the onto the plane gave the passport back to Andrew, shook him by the hand, and said, "We're we're rooting for you. We all wow. want Paisley Park to win." And Fantastic. he was so touched by it. So I think it was it was really special. It was really special for everybody. And you know, then the pressure was delivering. How did it feel to stand in that winner's enclosure having won one of the festival championship races? Um, I think people describe it as, as the hair standing up on, your, uh, on the back of your neck as you walk in and it is so true. It's such, a, um, it's such an amazing feeling with the music, people coming up and saying congratulations and, and, and it's what we all um, are striving to achieve. You know those big winners, those big days at Cheltenham mm. and and so you also try very hard just to almost pause to take a, a mental snapshot of the moment so that mm. you, you always have that there because it does, everything happens so quickly. It was in a very emotional day for everybody and, um, and it, was, it was amazing, amazing. We want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, got the whole season ahead of us. He's back. We saw him today. How is he? He's in great form. Um, he, he ate a lot through the summer um, he's um, you know he, he's put, he put on a lot of condition and um, which is which is great you know that's that's it, it was perfect and now he's going through the process of of, of working it back off again um, he um, he's cantering away he's moving as great as ever and he's as enthusiastic as ever and um, so you know he's in he's in very good order so have you spoken much to Andrew over the summer? How's he feeling ahead of the next campaign? Um, so, so yeah, Andrew came uh, down a couple of times to see him out in the field and then uh, down to uh, catch up with him at the yard and um, are excited, really excited. Um, and uh, he's, as he should be, you know, it, mm. it's, it is really exciting. He is the horse of a lifetime. So um, he, uh, goes off I think clears out his local shop of polos comes down <laughs> and um, and Paisley loves him you know he, he, he knows when he's there and and knows that he's going to be having treats for him <laughs> and and um, and is is so gentle with Andrew he really is so 
it's uh, it's perfect and and yeah he's been he's been very involved and was down the other day telling me it was uh, 91 days to Newbury and counting <laughs> so that was when he was down so yeah he's uh, uh, I think um, very excited I think would be the way to describe him. A key part of not only Ollie Murphy's team but also that of the Paisley Park story of last season is Aidan Coleman who with 1,000 winners and a first grade one win to his name is going into this season in great form. Aidan, your, your association with Ollie Murphy goes back a fair way, doesn't it? Yeah, we've known each other an awful long time. Obviously, he's not training that long, but um, as far as knowing Ollie and all the Murphys, it's, uh, it's um, yeah, back since, uh, well, Ollie's dad, Aidan, is, would be a neighbour of mine back home in, in Ireland and Cork. So, so yeah, we've a, a long association with all the, all the Murphys. You're, a, you're obviously a, a similar enough age to him. Do you, when you were growing up, did you, did you all know what you wanted to do respectively? Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. I suppose Ollie always had an eye on the training. Um, Did he? Yeah, yeah. No, well, I imagine he did anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he fell into it. Um, yeah, so like it was always, yeah, so yeah, so it was always going to go different ways, wasn't it? And uh, it's nice to be able to ride for him. So when did you, when you, when you first got the call to know that he was going to start out as a licensed trainer here, having, having obviously served the time with Gordon Elliott, how quick was it before you started riding for him? Um, I suppose when he started training, I suppose it was July time, it yeah. was more around the, the following Christmas before I started coming in and around then and then uh, after Aspen it was our first winner together, Linkfield, and, and uh, it's been very profitable and successful since. What's he like as a trainer? He's very good. <laughs> uh, look, he's got a fantastic staff here, um, second to none, uh, got great owners, so hence he got a really good bunch of horses and um, the facilities are good, so it's a, it's a yard, as, as everyone knows, going places. You've, you've sat on some, we've seen you this morning on a couple of seriously exciting, it looks, young horses. Is, is this a particularly sort of, is this a, a special sort of time of year, do you think? Obviously generally, but, but for this particular operation, because there does look to be some serious talent here now. Yeah, there is. I mean, there are quite a lot, so I've sat on most of them, I get around yeah. with all of them, you know, and, and um, uh, yeah, there is potentially some very, very nice horses there. Um, you know, some are going to fall by the wayside and some of them are going to come from out of nowhere and be better than the ones that we think are the best at the moment. But um, it is very exciting because you're hoping there's a few uh, potential stars there. I just want to switch to a horse who has given you, well, your first grade one winner and an immense season last year. We've recently been down to see Paisley Park, who by all accounts looks incredible going into, into his season as effectively the defending champion because that's what he is now. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, you know, we always had faith in him, um, um, Emma, uh, Barry uh, and I and, and, and Andrew, we always had faith that he could reach the heights he did, but un he, until he kind of won a stairs hurdle or whatever, you couldn't really, um, you couldn't really document that none of us were surprised that he got that far, you know yeah. I mean? We were always, we were always very confident in the horse and we always knew that if things went right, he, you know, you know, he will do what he has done and he hasn't let us down. And um, it's a very exciting season with him now, because obviously this time last year, we were, he was starting in handicaps and now um, his season's already mapped out, you know, Newbury, Ascot, Cheltenham, Cheltenham, Punchestown or Entry, whatever after, you know, so it's uh, very exciting. That day at Ascot was a real milestone for not only you but the trainer, wasn't it? And on reflection, it was a very significant day because obviously in the month since you've clocked up the 1,000th winner, but obviously if you'd have got to 1,000 without the Grade 1 winner, it would have been a different story to a degree, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, there would have been, a, obviously it would have been a great achievement in its own right, but it would have been a fraction hollow, but, um, you know, whatever about the Grade 1, but they're going to get a proper championship race at Cheltenham as well, it kind of, um, it puts that... Uh, it puts that story to bed, and we can kind yeah. of move on now and add a few more to the few more to it. How good, how good a horse is he? Obviously, it's a, a, a sort of silly question in ways because of the ability that he's got. But you said to me earlier, he looks like to us potentially he's got himself into a little bit of trouble. Say at Cheltenham um, in March, but to see him go from effectively two out to how strong he is at the line, is there something always underneath that you feel that this horse has got so much in reserve? Oh yeah, yeah he's very he's very versatile in the fact that like he he he. he um, you have to remember as well that he doesn't actually do a lot in front and because he doesn't mm. travel I'm always forced with his last two runs to Cleve and, and the stairs he's always been there too soon so he'd be more impressive if, if he if he got going a little bit later even and got going he'd be really impressed you know he's getting to the front too soon his last two races and he's still beating the best stairs around um, easily so um, yeah no it's, it's uh, and he's relatively young as well so you know as long as we keep having the look we had last year we'll, we'll be okay. Back at Warren Chase Stables, Ollie elaborated on some of the horses that he's hoping will carry on the team's momentum this term. 
brewing up a storm who, he obviously cost a fair amount, but he was raced like a good horse last year and he really, really excelled himself, didn't he? Does he go novice chasing? He does. Um, he's obviously a winner of a point-to-point -point, um, a horse. Again, I've always held in, held in high regard. His bumper form was good and I think his novice hurdle form was very, very solid the whole way through. Um, he did everything bar when his grade one. Um, yeah. I never felt I really had him spot on last year, um, probably up until entry, um, where he jumped the last and I thought he was full sure going to gallop away and go and win and, and, and obviously end up getting beat by a very good horse in reserve tank that yes. went and won a, another grade one in, in Punchestown. But I've given him a little wind up. Um, hopefully that's just going to help him a bit. Um, I'm going to drop him back in trip and yeah, I'm looking forward to him. It's interesting you say about the trip because obviously he raced largely over the, the two and a half miles. Um, he's obviously got speed in there as well. Did you, did you feel it was a win thing that, or that maybe his stamina was slightly ebbing away at the end of his races? Do you know what? A bad thing for a trainer to say, but I'm actually not quite sure because he's, he, he's won his point to point. Um, but to me, in, in, in Cheltenham, he didn't quite see out of his race when he looked like he'd win turning in. And he looked full sure like he'd win in entry from the back of the last of the line and hasn't quite seen his race out either. So either his win was just niggling him or he's not quite staying. Um, so we're going to start him off at two miles on a big galloping track and uh, we'll, we'll make a decision then whether we go up and trip or not. But either way, if, if there were any form of ailments, be they, be they stamina or obviously wind, um, it's not like he was letting himself down on the racetrack, is it? Not at all. He did us proud all year. Um, just trying to find that final little bit to the, to the jigsaw that we haven't quite got. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe just tweaking his wind is that final piece. Um, he's a horse I love. He's, a, yeah, he's loads of quality. Thomas Darby, um, is he part of the, the set of novice chasers for the year? Yes, he is. Um, again, he was a big raw horse last year. Mm. Uh, he never really looked like he clicked all year um, until he kind of turned in the Supreme and, uh, and saw his race out very strong. He actually struck into himself that day, so that's yeah. why we didn't see him again. But as you saw him uh, this morning, I think he's, he's done very, very well for a break. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's one that really does excite me. He's done us proud in everything he's done. He's always shown me an awful lot since day one. And uh, again, his form has been very, very strong throughout. Is he exclusively at this stage a two miler or will he go over further? I'll d d definitely start him off at two. W the way he finished out at Cheltenham, now, it wouldn't surprise me if we went to two and a half. Um, but he works like he's got bags of speed and uh, yeah, he's just got a lot of class. The, the second of your, your medalists in the Supreme Novices Hurdle, if you will, was Itchy Feet, who a bit like Thomas Darby ran a huge race. Has, has, he, has it been a bit more of a dif difficult decision to plan what to do with him this year? Yes, it has. And we've been in great depth with, with, with Andrew Brooks and, and Sean Tin and his race manager and, 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 and Gavin Sheehan. I'm in two minds whether we're going to go jumping fences straight away. Um, he may well go Welsh champion hurdle route or there's okay. a two mile hurdle at Kempton middle late October. Um, so yeah, there's a few things in the pipeline. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, there's a few things in the pipeline with him. I've no question of a doubt he'd be a lovely chaser, but he is only five. Um, the other two boys are six, turning seven. So I think Itchy Feet's another year to 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 to, to gain a bit more experience and some some very good prize money over hurdles to be won as well. I, 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 it's not a, a weak division by any stretch of the imagination that the, the two mile division, but there's yeah. a lot of horses that have gone by the wayside and. Even if you're not good enough to win, there's some very, very good prize money in those grade ones over hurdles. How much potential is there with IK Brunel? Yeah, probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever done since I started training was run him in the, in, in the listed race at Kempton. Um, he went down and missed the first couple of hurdles and then Dan's horse fell in front of him, in, I think, at the first down the back and he got detached. And listen, it was embarrassing. I walked away, I was so embarrassed. Um, but he was third to Elitzia de Nuts on his, on his first run over hurdles and he's a horse I think an awful lot of. Um, we'll start him off in a, in, a, in a maiden hurdle and hopefully he'll go and win his maiden hurdle and then we'll move on to, to bigger and better things. But I'd, yeah, I'd never ever want to see that, that, that race from Kempton again. One horse who would have caught the headlines earlier, earlier this summer um, for one of the great moments in sport this year would be Champagne Super Over, who was, who was snapped up as a name pretty much straight after the, the World Cup final. Back in July, wasn't he? Yeah, quite. If he's not good, we're in big trouble. <laughs> um, but no, he's uh, another horse of, uh, of Max McNeil's, who's yeah. been a, a, another brilliant supporter um, for the last year or so. Great fun. Um, love having him around the place, and I've some, some some lovely horses for him for the for the upcoming season. Um, but yeah, he's a, a lovely son of, yeah. of Jeremy. This lad, um, 
does everything very easy and will will start from a bumper in the autumn before going jumping hurdles but uh he's got it cantering around that gallop and eating grass at the moment but how good he is after that i i don't know i couldn't tell you more from emma lavelle now who isn't just going to war with paisley park this term so emma after such a fantastic season we've got the whole season proper ahead of us horses are coming back in how's the team looking this year uh well touch wood they look great you know we've got uh you know, lots of nice horses. Um, uh, obviously, Paisley's leading the way, but we've got some lovely youngsters, um, you know, wanting to to shine for this year. And mm -hmm. um, so, touch wood, you know, numbers are very good, and um, and quality is is increasing all the time. So it's ex it, you know, exciting year ahead. There's some famous new silks among the ones that we sported by your runners this year as well, and Trevor Hemmings. Yeah, absolutely, uh, which is really exciting. You know, he, he, Mr Hemmings has been a, a big owner for um, you know, a large number of years and had some wonderful horses. Mm -hmm. and, and I think everybody, uh, me definitely included, but everybody in the yard was really, really excited to see, um, to see the horses, um, two lovely youngsters arriving. And, um, and it's it's sort of it definitely is exciting for the for the season ahead. Um, just to touch on some of your other um, more well-known names, do Rasha counter? What's your plan for him this year? Um, so the plan for him is the Labrook. Um, it's it's a very uh, it's a very good race traditionally for second season novices. He's rated 149. He's won round Newbury already, um, and and I think he's pretty smart. Um, he's again a bit stronger this year. Um, he's he's just you know he's just been learning all the time. It was a lovely way to end <coughs> the season last season, winning at Utoxeter. We toyed with sending him to Cheltenham, but mentally we just didn't think he was ready, and, and sort of went for the you know the bigger uh, I suppose I say bigger the, the the smaller race, but with a nice prize at at Utoxeter instead, and that paid off. And I think has really set him up for this season. Um, the plan will be to go and give him a run over hurdles. Um, and just you know, try and look after that mark over fences, and then go for the Labrook with him. So, you know, I hope he could make up into a in a into a pretty decent staying handicap chaser. And what would the plan be for Fun Santa, having won a novice hurdle? Um, so he, the plan will be to go novice chasing. Right. Um, he was a really lovely horse last year. He was a, um, you know, he was a little bit of a project um, in that uh, he just wanted to do everything in a bit of a hurry. Um, so it was all about teaching him just to relax and, and do it the right way and all of that came to fruition when he won at Hereford and he won really impressively that day. Mm. Um, I think he's a smart horse. Um, I know, you know, Barry loves him as well and, and I think he, he loves the ground soft um, and I, I just think he could be a nice horse for us to go to war with in, in, novice, in the Novice Chase Division. And amongst the other nice young horses you've got, you've got horses like Killer Clown, um, You've got Flying Nun, who's related to Angel's Breath. How do you feel about your team of young horses going into this season? They look, they look lovely at this stage, they really do. And we had some really decent bumper performers last year. Um, we've never been about training horses to win bumpers. It's been about, you know, if, they, if they're good enough to win, that's great. But, but at the same time, um, you know, it is, it is an education for them to see the track and, um, and for them to understand what it is about coming off the bridle, to understand what it is about, about you know, being at the races and, and to get tired. Mm. Um, but we had a lot of, of really nice horses that finished up being placed and running well. Um, uh, Namib Dancer, Thunderstruck, um, you know, there, there's a lot of nice ones that, that have done well for the summer and, mm. and, and are ready to go novice hurdling. So, you know, at this stage, I just can't wait, just can't wait for the weather to change and us to get going. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for on this week's edition of This Racing Life, but we'd like to thank everyone who made this week's show possible, and indeed to you at home, for watching. We will see you again very soon.